Hey friends, Greg here with the Pennywise guys. I'm going to show you after you've killed off the termites, what do you do next? I'm going to show you how to inspect the damage and how to do the repairs if needed. Let's get started. Alright, now that I have killed off the termites and there's no more activity, I don't see any more frass or activity. It's been a few days, I just wanted to give it some time. Now I want to go ahead and investigate the damage and see if I need to cut open this wall and make necessary repairs. Okay, I'm going to use a scope here and we're going to, first of all, I've got it in the lower hole here. Here's the kick out holes and we're going to investigate these holes to see if we see any damage. And we're going to show the results of the inspection right up here. As I insert it, I see no, no uh, damage there. These, by the way, are two by sixes. So that'll give us some advantage on um, whether or not we do the repair. I see no, no damage there along the side, just above the kick out holes. Uh, it's, it's not widespread damage. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and put it in the hole right above the kick out. And let's see what we got here. Let's get it to go in. Okay, there is a nesting cavity right there. Okay, and I'm only in about a half an inch. So, um, if I get it further down, it's being obstruction there. I can't get it further down. Something's blocking it. Okay, but I do see a nesting cavity there. But according to the hole that's just a couple inches away, I don't see any widespread damage okay so that hole is newer they basically migrated migrated down to that area let's check above here okay and i'm gonna go alongside the stud here there's a stud to my left you see it there okay and the framing for the window yep okay um i don't see anything there Okay, that's a good sign. Now we're going to put it that way. I was just right there. Here's the kick out holes. Now I'm going to stick it in here and see what we got in there. Okay, let's see if I get it past that point. Okay, there is the nesting cavity. Just, it's just right below the kick out holes. And it's right there. Okay, um, let me go to the hole that's just to the left of that kick out hole and I just drilled a hole straight into the into the two by or the, actually it's a two by six and I drilled a hole straight in there's the end of my drilling oh there's a couple there's a little bit of holes there that could be part of the nesting area right there okay what that tells me is we have some damage but it's not extensive damage I want to go ahead and open it up. I'm going to show you the nesting areas. I'm going to show you how to make a repair in case the damage is extensive. So what I'm going to do is I marked out uh, the edges of the studs with nails. Okay, and I'm going to go in uh, about a half an inch on that side of the nail. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to have something for the piece to go back in and screw into the, um, the stud through the sheetrock so it actually has something to support. So roughly about a half inch, give myself enough room to put that piece back in there. Go ahead and draw a straight line. You could use a sheetrock saw, but it's kind of tough when you're cutting into studs. It'll take a little more time if you just use a sheetrock saw, it's cheaper. But uh, this is the first time reviewing this tool from um, Harbor Freight, and it's the Warrior brand uh, oscillating multi-tool. And I have a friend that has used one for years and has no problems with it, so I want to get ahead and give it a try to give them a review on this, uh, this, this multi-tool. I went ahead and used the Bauer blade. I went ahead with the better blades uh, just because it will put less stress on the uh, two amp motor. The uh, Bauer multi-tool has got a three amp motor. It's a little heavier duty, but it's three times as expensive. It's almost $58, 60 bucks. This is $19.99, $20. So we're going to give it a go, and uh, if I like it, we'll give it a thumbs up. All right, we're going to go ahead and do a cut across here. This is uh, studs here, so we're going to 
start here. Okay, I went a little deeper here and in the study area I pulled it back just a bit so I don't want to cut too much into the stud and we're going to keep going around here. hitting the trim a little bit there just make sure you just don't hit it much because um, there's a some metal trim here so I'm just gonna break that out all right the damage is not very extensive at all I went ahead and took my multi-tool and cut this uh, nesting area out to see how far it went back and now we're gonna take the scope and see how far it goes and determine if we need to replace some wood these two are solid. I put a whole couple holes in there. There's no activity other than just a couple little holes into that, but nice and solid. This one's nothing. They double plated this here, two by sixes up to the top header of the window. So these are need to be structurally strong. This filler piece here is apparently to hold the edge of the frame of the window. So not as critical, but I want to go ahead and take my scope now. We'll see what damage is beyond about uh, almost a third way back on this 2x6. I'm going to try to hold the camera and the probe here. I'm going into the hole. And uh, let's see what we see here. Okay. Yeah, it goes, uh, it goes, see, it's, it goes almost all the way back. See that activity there? There's more of a, probably down a couple inches behind that is another nesting area or continuation of it. So that's, uh, the, the, uh, the stud to the side of it is clean, but I think I'm going to go ahead and uh, cut that section out just to show you how it's done. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and cut it down here because the other activity was here and here. Might as well go ahead and get it all at one time. So if you're going to make a cut, just go ahead and cut it down here. I scribed a line. I pulled those two nails. If you know how to pull nails, okay. If not, learn how. We can use a flat bar with a hammer and you hammer it in there until you can pry it out. If you just practice a little bit, you can get those nails out pretty easily. So there's going to be some siding nails on the back side. Um, but right now we're going to cut through and we'll try to pry it, pry it away from the siding nails. All right, it's going to be a little noisy here. Did a little bit off camera here because uh, it was going to not be able to see what I was doing. First of all, I put a, a rag in there to keep all the chips down and pull the rag out. It'll take most of the, um, the debris out. Um, just keep working your oscillating tool back there. And when you get to the corner there, since it's, you can't go straight on, that one back corner is going to be a little uncut. So we're going to try to get this pried out. I got it all the way down. And if I have to cut into the siding, I can do that because this is OSB. And on the back of that is... Um, a hardy plank. So I can cut a little bit into the OSB. First I'm going to get all this broken out and then I might trim that up. Okay, so if you take the pry bar and a hammer and go ahead and start working it like that. Oh, it broke out pretty nicely. Okay, there's a nail coming in from the top. Okay, so we're going to have to get it pulled away from that. Okay, uh, let's just go ahead and pry it down now. 
See there's a nail right there, there's two nails. So look, there we go. All right, let me go ahead and put that up here. So that piece is gone. That's a, now there's a little bit of activity right there, but we got 99% of it. And then I'll cut these nails off and then we'll put a new piece in. And let's just see, what I, I'm gonna cut this open so we can find the nesting area uh, deep inside here and I'll show it to you. So I just scribed it across there, cut as straight as possible. I'll trim off that little corner there. That's easy enough. Cut the nails, I'll measure this out, and I'll get a piece cut, and we're gonna go ahead and glue it and nail it back in. It's that easy, just get rid of, get rid of all that. Now I wanted to see if the, the bottom plate here is nice and clean. And so it looks like it came in probably into yeah came in right there so it came into this piece it didn't come from the top plate because it's nice and clean there there's the nail hole but the activity started rare there it is right there that little hole right there is the entry hole and they ate that out and they started working their way through and made a nesting area i'm gonna open it up so we can take a look at it that'd be fun to check it out all right i went ahead and treated it with more foam from my side and uh, got all the crevices cracks everything in between here just to make sure that anything is left over will be dead I'm gonna let that cure for a day and then I'll come back and um, put the new piece in okay let me show you the results of cutting that piece out and the activity all right I went ahead and cut it apart uh, to start at the top here that first area here was the, the big nesting area. And you can see uh, they bore down through the wood, traveling down uh, to a new nesting area. And so this top piece had the main nesting area from here all the way down through there. Okay, and uh, I did find one termite that was uh, still left over in the cavity there. And there he is right there, dead dead little guy I don't think he's moving holy smokes he is still moving look at that look at he's moving his legs that's why I treated it more look at that all right I treated this area yesterday and let it dry so we're making sure there is no more live termites like the one we found and uh, all the activity is gone and we're ready to go ahead and patch in the new the new piece i didn't have a two by six uh but that's okay this this here is just uh, supporting this edge it really doesn't need it but we're gonna go ahead and put in a two by four i had plenty of these in stock i just was short on two by sixes so a two by four is fine i wouldn't do that on the uh, load bearing ones here to the header but this is fine for right here um, i'm gonna go ahead and um, Put in some uh, wood glue here. We're gonna just glue this in at the bottom. I'll put the glue there. And then I'll put some glue on the top of the two by four. Make sure we got plenty of uh, glue right there. And I'll go ahead and put that there. We're just gonna go ahead and get this fed in and I'm gonna show you how we're gonna patch this sheetrock. Okay, we're just gonna, just like that. That's in there. It's glued in. It, I pre-fitted it. It was a nice fit. And now we've got support for this frame around the window. Okay. And uh, two by four is fine. I went ahead and went recessed a little bit, get a little bit more central support for that two by six up there. All right. Uh, next thing to do is we're going to prepare to put the sheetrock back in. And uh, what I like to do is I've got um, the framing here to, to screw it to across half inch here half inch there and I didn't have here here and here this piece I just added in and what I do is I go down to Lowe's you can go down to Lowe's or Home Depot in their lumber section where they have the units of, of plywood units of two by fours so all the dimensional lumber and also the fencing they have these strips that they put between the the uh, pallets of, uh, of lumber 
This is the throwaway stuff. They just break it off and throw it away, and you can get this stuff for free. Dimensions are usually one and a half inch wide, but a quarter inch all the way up to half inch. If you go down to the uh, where they have the fencing, you're going to find the thicker stuff. This one here happened to be a half inch in dimension, half inch material. This one's a little over three eighths. Great stuff for backers. Okay, get it free. They let you take it. Say hey, it's a scrap lumber. They're letting you know it's a throwaway. They let you have it for free. Okay. So that's one way to get some free lumber to make these fixes. I went ahead and put this one in here. It's a tight fit, but basically you're just gonna go ahead and um, put a couple screws to hold it. Make sure you don't screw your finger here. Okay, we're just gonna get a couple screws to hold it here. Make sure your fingers are out of the way. Okay, just like that. That is nice and solid. And then I have these other pieces that we're going to be going in right here. So let me go ahead. And that one isn't a, a real snug fit, so I'll get the screw ready to here, go here. Put it in there. It's about halfway. And uh, let's go ahead and put in one screw. Make sure your fingers are not there. Okay. There we go. That's recessed. That's going to hold that. And then we've got the one across the top. Okay, and of course I dropped my man on my screw. All right, we're gonna get this put in here like that. Just hold it in place. One screw is all we're gonna need. Okay, that's recessed and that's held tight. Okay, you can put two screws in if you want, but one's fine, two good for here. And now we can put that piece back in before I do that, let's go ahead and put the insulation back in place that we kind of moved out of the way when we did the work. Okay, there we go. That looks good. Let's bring this back up a little bit here. Okay, we're ready to go ahead and put this piece that we cut out back in place. Okay. And then we'll just go ahead and screw it all the way around. Let me uh, show you a trick on finding screws that are in the sheetrock and that are hidden. If you had to pull the screws out of this piece of sheetrock that you're cutting out, because we cut on this side of the screws on both sides, but what if you had screws that were located on these studs here? How do you find them? You gotta gotta pull those out and otherwise you have broken sheetrock that you're trying to pull out. Take your magnetic finder, and we're gonna try this stud right here, and locate, and hold it sideways, locate where that screw is. Okay, right, it's sticking right there. So we know the magnet is right here, so we know that the screw is right about there, okay? So take your impact with the Phillips and just go on reverse, just slightly dig around with it until you locate the head. It's right there. All right, get it on there. Oh, had to go reverse, okay. There it is, I, I didn't have it reversed. Okay, so there it is right there. All right, I got it all screwed in place, nice and tight. I got a few screws here, screws around the perimeter. I wanna show you real quick. Uh, we only had a half inch on either side, and you're thinking that maybe it's, you can't go straight on because you just be right at the edge and it break the, the, uh, the sheetrock out. So you have to angle it a little bit. Let me show you how to do that real quick. It's um, not straight on is, is pretty easy to do, but when you have to angle it, uh, you're gonna cut the paper a little bit on the one corner. So let's, let's, we're gonna put a screw here. Uh, go back about a half inch and start screwing it on an angle. Okay, I hit, the, hit the, uh, the wood there. And go ahead and go in right like that. It breaks the paper on the corner this edge here is flush, okay? Let me show you what happens if you go straight on. And you have to go real close to the edge. Okay, and you're not gonna be able to see this until after I do it. See how that broke that out? It just breaks out the sheetrock in there and it doesn't have any holding power. So if you bring it back a little bit and angle it just a bit and go in, sure it breaks out the, the edge here, but it's not cracked here. 
So you don't have any cracking here, it's flush, but it digs in just a little bit there. That's acceptable. This is not gonna hold, okay? Little trick there for when you get that close to the edge. I could have cut this further, but I'm cutting right through the screws with that jitterbug oscillating tool. And you don't wanna cut through these screws with that tool to break it. Because the tool that I had was for wood only. You can get one for metal, but we got one for wood, so I stayed this side of those screws and left only a half inch material for that engagement. So hope that helps. Let me talk to you about taping real quick and, and doing the, the uh, compound. I will float this whole thing off and don't I won't tape it. I float it off with joint compound or topping compound for sheetrock. The reason I don't tape it, it just takes more and it, it bulks up and you have to take and feather it out and it takes longer. When you have a small piece like this, it has 100% engagement all the way around on both sides. It is held so tight and it doesn't flex, it's not going to crack. Taping is mainly for areas where, let's say you have between stud and stud and the sheetrock goes across and there's no backing behind that section between stud to stud. That's when that sheetrock will, will flex and crack. Okay, as long as you have that backing on there, like I showed you that I put in stud, backing, backing, stud, you're not, you have 100% backing and it's not going to flex and just that short section there, trust me, it won't, it won't crack. So you can float this off and not have to feather it out because you have now the tape and you have to feather it further, further away. So it's just a little quicker, easier for a homeowner to do it that way and it'll last. Okay, hope that helped. Thank you for watching and make sure you investigate damage from termites to see if you have to do any repairs. And now you know how. I pray that you are blessed and that you know him who is the author of life.